buying that Kawhi would sign in Philadelphia with the Sixers? No, I'm not buying the report um, because I haven't heard any information that would drastically change Kawhi and his group and what they're trying to accomplish. So there's going to be a lot of reports out before he gets traded. But I haven't heard anything that would make me want to believe this to be true. Kawhi's not trying to join some super basketball team. He's not trying to join some organization. He's just trying to go to Los Angeles. He doesn't have stipulations. Who's the coach? Who's the general manager? Who are the other players? He just wants to go to Los Angeles, that being the Clippers or the Lakers. So um, I wouldn't read too much into this. I believe there's a lot of things that people might want to get Philadelphia or someone from the East involved because they don't think that Pop will trade him to the Lakers or trade him to the West because that's what San Antonio said initially. But Kawhi has the leverage in this situation. You are really taking a tremendous risk in try if you do pull off a trade, that being to Philadelphia or to someone else in the Eastern Conference. I understand why Philly would make sense from a lot of people's perspective, not only because they do seem to be one superstar away from being the clear-cut best team in the East and a real contender potentially, but also who's the head coach of the Sixers? Brett Brown, where was he? The Spurs. The Sixers team doctor is the doctor that probably knows more about Kawhi than anyone. Not that they're including the doctor in these discussions, but Dr. Jonathan Glashow is Kawhi, the doctor Kawhi saw when he was in New York. He's the Sixers team doctor. I, but I think we're in a place where right now both sides of this equation, be it the Spurs and Kawhi's side, could we've got to be careful with any of these reports and asking, so who potentially could benefit from this information being out there? And this is one that you could make the case either side does. You can make the case the Spurs would want this out there because it might make the Lakers have a greater sense of urgency. But if Kawhi really is dead set, as Chris has reported, on the city of Los Angeles, then you could also think that Kawhi's people would want this out there for the same reason. So the Lakers would have more of a sense of urgency because Kawhi is not set on getting to Los Angeles eventually. He's set on getting to Los Angeles immediately. But we also have to remember that just four days ago, where the Sixers were at was not even including faults in a trade for Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. And so my, my guess is that the Sixers not wanting to include faults, the Celtics not even wanting to include Jalen Brown, set the tone for San Antonio or the Lakers to revisit San Antonio and say, we are your best option, and maybe once again not give them the offer the Spurs want, and now this information comes so out. So sticking with the Sixers, though, the report is that the Sixers would be willing to offer a ton, whether it's Marco Fultz or not. The Sixers are willing to offer a ton in order to make this trade happen with the Spurs. And you wonder if it is maybe the team doctor because they have a connection or the coach because they have a connection. Or maybe it's just that of the, all the teams out there, maybe the Sixers offer Kawhi the best chance of winning. Or is that not even factoring in here at all? Well, I, you could probably say it. From any other trade, well, what would be a, a what would a player like Kawhi? What would what would what would change him from being Los Angeles a championship team? But I mean, and the people that I've talked to, this was never part of the conversation. So I, I can understand Nick and his theory. Okay, who releases this? Who's it better for? But for me, Kawhi, and knowing the people he's associated, they're not playing any games. Like Kawhi Leonard's not that type of guy. His agent's not that guy. His uncle's not that guy. So why would they want to send a missed message? message? Right. To me, it's been fairly cl clear. I want to go to Los Angeles. Well, oh, Kawhi said he wants to go to the Lakers. No, they clarified it. No, Kawhi wants to go to Los Angeles, that being the Clippers or the Lakers. So I don't even see a benefit for them releasing this information because what it would make them, it would make them inconsistent. So I think that people will be able to shoot holes in their theory. Kawhi's going to get criticized a lot. And when you're getting criticized, I don't want to think you want to send out a message that can be misinterpreted. Would Kawhi make the Sixers immediate contenders, despite whatever the Sixers would have to give up? Listen, well, if they're not giving up Simmons or Embiid, we know that. So it would Kawhi, Embiid, Simmons, okay, that so big those three. three. I, if they got him just for the year, right? Because that's what the, the – I. No disrespect to Chris Haynes' report. If they were to trade for him, he would go play for them. It would just be for the year. 
Here's the thing. I think it would make them clearly the second best team in basketball. They jump over Houston. I think that they jump, if they're not already ahead of Boston, they jump over Boston. And in a normal year, of course it makes them contenders. I question whether anyone can be a contender. I, I talked last week about if you made, would the Eastern Conference starting all-star team be a contender against the Golden State Warriors? Like, because of what the Warriors have did last year and that they replace their biggest position of weakness with the best offensive center in the league in Boogie Cousins, I don't know that we're going to have another contender this year. But I do think, even if it's just for one year, Kawhi plus those guys would be the second best team in basketball. I do believe that. Uh, yeah, you definitely have to consider them contenders. Anytime you can get to the finals in Eastern or Western Conference final, you've got four teams left. All four of those teams are legitimate contenders. Now, I would disagree with Nick that I believe that Golden State, because I know they can't get better on the defensive end with Cousins. Based on the numbers, they can't get better on the offensive end with him. So if you talk about a year that some something can go wrong or an injury or something like that, I think it's more likely now, because now we're in year, what, they're trying going for three. They just got three or four. Now they'd be going for four, four or five. five. So I think it's more likely some of the some of the situations that you have pointed out in the past as far as championship teams, I believe that's on the board now for the Golden State Warriors. What about playing style, Nick? How would Kawhi's playing style fit into this? Oh, I think, team? listen, I think there's a reason that people, even though LeBron's clearly better than Kawhi or Paul George, there's a reason some people thought that the Sixers should be targeting Kawhi or Paul George over LeBron. Why? Stylistically, because he doesn't have to have the ball in his hands because he is a knockdown shooter on a team who's starting guard and Ben Simmons is obviously the opposite of that. And I mean, he's a better three-point shooter than LeBron. And he also... He's we a better keep, defender. Well, that's what I was just about to get to. That, that was the Sixers' identity last year. Yes. Was their defense. Like, we talk about Ben Simmons' inability to shoot and Joel Embiid going 20 and 10. They were the number two defense in the NBA last year from Christmas on. And so <laughs> you would be adding the best perimeter defender in the league. It would become potentially... A, a generationally dominant defense. Ben Simmons at, at the point. All right? Covington will probably be going. Kawhi at the three. Joel Embiid at the five. I mean, Sarich is probably in there. Yeah, yeah. he's going to be the four. So they would suffocate Boston. I mean, how would you like Kyrie Irving have to be guarded by Ben Simmons and also he got to guard Ben Simmons on the other end? That's not what – who they're going to put in the paint to build a stop? Joel Embiid. And Kawhi – and what we've seen with Kawhi that he doesn't get credit for now, he's if, of all the top five players, he's been the least maintenance of all the players. So there's a number of reasons why he fits in well with the, Philadelphia. The Sixers last year had three guys get all defensive team votes, and Simmons, Robert Covington, and Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid almost won Defensive Player of the Year. If they were to add a guy who's won two Defensive Players of the Year, we're talking about defenses that at least talent-wise would rival like the Ben Wallace Pistons of 12, 14 years ago. Like, they would be as good one through five defensively as any team we've seen in, I would say, in the last 15, 20 years. Now, the Sixers would have to think that it would be worth it for a one-year rental. Right. They would have to be comfortable with a lot of things to go about it because that is, that's the part of this that has been kind of left out. We all know Kawhi wants to get to Los Angeles. Would he play for different team next year and what would the team give up if they think they are only going to have him for the one year or they could hope and pray for the Paul George scenario whereby he told everyone he was yeah. only going to play in Los Angeles and somehow the Thunder convinced him to, to say All right. thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show also be sure to check out more of the best clips from first things first or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1